US Ford, Japanese Mitsubishi, British Rolls Royce, German Porsche and Maybach. Czechoslovakian Skoda might not seem to fit in. But then there would be no place for Soviet vehicles at all. However, we do have them here in World of Tanks, and they're on a par with their formidable rivals. What is the Skoda TVP's fate then? Instead of making assumptions, we'll arrange a fully-fledged test drive of the new vehicle, and we'll do this in combat conditions. This top-tier Czechoslovakian has a pretty sophisticated name. It's just joined the game, but players have already dubbed the vehicle a Batchat Destroyer. But let's proceed to the tests and see if this is true. We'll take a typical situation for the experiment. The mines map. The battle is starting. Both tanks are climbing a mountain. Each of them has 1,800 HP. The French vehicle reaches the top first, but its gun isn't loaded yet. The Czechoslovakian tank arrives shortly after and immediately starts raining one shell after another on the enemy. The bat chap looks helpless and doomed. But suddenly, the situation changes dramatically. The loading time of the Skoda's magazine is 25 seconds, and within the magazine, it's a record low, just 1.5 seconds. There are four shells in the magazine, each dealing on average 320 HP of damage. This is almost 1,300 HP in just 4.5 seconds. Pretty powerful. However, this isn't enough to destroy a tank of the same tier. But let's return to our battle. The Batchat finishes off the Skoda quite easily. To avoid any doubts, we'll do it again. And again. And one final time. The TVP can only win the fight if the Batchat fails to penetrate its armor. But it is easy to penetrate the Skoda. While its streamlined turret can cause ricochets, a shot at the hull is almost a guaranteed penetration. There's only 65 millimeters at the front, and even less at the sides and rear. The magazine is small, and the armor is thin. What's the vehicle's key strength, then? Let's hold one more experiment. The competitors are the same. The Skoda and the Batchat, but now they have another target, a small and swift RU251, which can reach a speed of 80 kilometers per hour. It's over 300 meters away. The French tank fires first. Within about 10 seconds, the Bat Chat has fired five shells and made only two hits. Well, firing at long distances has never been its strong point. Now let's see how the Skoda tackles this task. A direct hit, a second, a third. The next shell slows down the German scout. And this isn't luck. With the dispersion of 0.35 meters and aiming time of 2.1 seconds, the Skoda is as accurate as the Object 140. In addition, the Czechoslovakian tank is much more accurate when firing on the move. You can and should try that when playing with the Skoda. But there's a fly in the ointment. The Skoda has the weakest penetration power when compared with the top medium tanks. You should pick thinly armored targets at long range and shoot carefully during close quarter engagements. Any mistake can be costly. However, 248 mm of penetration can punch through the weak spots of an enemy vehicle. As for the equipment, it's better to mount a vertical stabilizer and enhanced gun laying drive. Besides, a 410 meter view range is perfect for using coated optics. Yet, if you prefer a high rate of fire, you should focus on your crew's comfort. Improved ventilation, the brothers in arms perk and Borkti reduce the gun loading time down to 22 seconds. The happier the crew are, the more effective they are. We could have limited our test drive to a standard phrase. The Skoda is an excellent support tank, but this isn't entirely correct. We haven't told you about the high mobility of the Skoda yet. Its engine provides 1,000 horsepower while the tank weighs 40 tons. This means it's got 25 horsepower per ton. Only the Batchat can boast a better ratio. But the French tank, like many other vehicles, lags behind the Czechoslovakian in terms of maneuverability. The top speed of the Skoda stands at 60 kilometers per hour. With good maneuverability and impressive acceleration, this newcomer is very agile. 
but TVP only reveals its full potential when both its strengths, magazine and mobility, are used together. And there's a variety of options for this. You can use two quite different tactics when the battle begins. You can avoid the front line and shoot enemies spotted by the Allies from a safe place. Stealthy attacks are convenient and profitable, as long as you deal damage and survive. Or, if you're looking for something different, there's a more exciting plan. You can hurry to a key point and help your team from the midst of the battle. But this scenario is only worthwhile when you're sure that your allies will help you. In other words, this plan is suitable for a platoon. You wait while your teammate draws enemy fire. And when the enemy is reloading, you move in, show all you've got and hide again. Whichever plan you choose, keep in mind that the chance to win a single fight is very small at the beginning of the battle. You're better off keeping your tanks safe and waiting in the wings. Once your enemies are worn down by the team, it's time to go hunting. The TVP becomes a real predator, menacing and merciless. It can easily take on the role of a pack leader, and if necessary, it can dispose of an enemy on its own. The Skoda helps you to completely enjoy the game, especially at the most crucial points of battle. Try the new tank, we're sure you'll like it.